just to give him a wonderful round of applause right now. Now, we're going we're to do it in order. So if you have a question that you'd, you'd like to ask, just raise your hand, say where you're from and who you are. And if you can make sure that your, your questions are orderly and polite, we'd appreciate that. Um, and um, I'll let the person at the front start. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Howard McCalla. I'm from a radio station called Affinity Extra. Um, <coughs> having listened to the leg um, to the the long line of albums that you've released uh, over these years, uh, what is it that keeps you going to want to continue when there's so many other things that you probably are very skilled in as well? You know, um, when I hear the testimonies of people after listening to the songs that I put out, it keeps me going. And um, knowing that someone has to stay within the genre to bring the truth to people and to bring inspiration to people. And so if we kind of back away from it, then we miss out on the mission that God has called us to do. Thank you. Another question. Don't be shy. Hi, <laughs> yes, sir. I'm Minister Pearl. Uh, I'm from Doncaster. I just wanted to ask a question following <coughs> what he was asking you. Um, so you started a very, at a very early age, yes. and it's something that God has called you to do. Um, most of the times we see people getting lost in the process. What has kept you in the process and what has kept you at God's feet? My dedication to the local church. Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes mm -hmm. musicians and songwriters, singers, what they do, is they get their start at the local church and then when um, they really get into the industry, the industry pulls them from the local church. And so I tell everybody all the time, my longevity is because of my dedication to my local church. I grew up uh, pretty strict and uh, we could not do it ev everything. We couldn't do a lot of stuff. But my pastor said that, you know, I know you have a gift. <clears throat> I'm going to let you use your gift, but you have to take your church. You have to take your home. So I'm one of the artists who uh, could never really reach some of the plateaus that some of the other artists have reached only because I had to be back home for church on Sunday. Um, not only did I have to be back home for church on Sunday, but I also had to be a part of our Bible school. So I could not function outside the church and call it ministry and not do ministry within the local church, within the local walls of the church. So I would say to anyone that if you want longevity, you know, you have to you have to really make sure that you stay connected to your pastor. Make sure that you stay low, stay connected to your local church. Uh, make sure that you function in your church. You know, uh, you can't, you can't, you know, I, I tell a, a lot of the artists all the time, you can't say that it's ministry and you bypass the local church. You can't say it's the ministry of Jesus Christ and bypass his body. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we get, you know, quote unquote famous because of our gifts and our talents. But we have to remember that gifts and talents come without repentance. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to utilize your gift and your talent to to put the word out but the, the 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 strength of putting the word out so that the word will not return void and so as the music goes out people are drawn to the church not you thank you got an anybody else have more questions <laughs> So you, you were described as the, the was it the bishop of hip hop? <laughs> <laughs> Some may think it's, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a, a dichotomy. How, how how do you respond to that? Well, I, I was I was given that name by Sean Puffy Combs, mm. 
P. Diddy, as many people would <clears throat> say that. He <clears throat> called me the pastor of hip-hop. Okay. And the only reason why he did that is because at one point, I was ministering to all of the hip-hop artists in New York City. They would frequent my church. They would come and ask me for prayer. I was one of the ones who extended my hand to them to show them that you don't have to be perfect to come to church. Mm -hmm. And because I was in that arena with them and I was able to go into uh, those atmospheres and present Jesus. <clears throat> and when he saw the fact that I was among them and was able to stand my ground for holiness and stand my ground for Jesus and be able to minister to them without condemning them, uh, he kind of threw that, that title on me. You're the pastor of hip hop. Yeah. And so because of it, you know, um, I got a little flack from the church, um, you know, calling me the pastor of hip hop. But in return, I had so many secular artists come to my church for prayer. Um, so yeah. many secular artists that I was able to become friends with and lead them to Jesus, lead them to water baptism, lead them to turning their lives around. So that's what that was all about. I mean, and, and isn't that, isn't that uh, an example of how we should be <clears throat> light in the darkness? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, our light has to be effective, but it cannot be effective in light. It can only be effective in darkness. Mm -hmm. Come on. One last question. Hopefully it's the last. Uh, we've known you as a multi-award winning artist. <coughs> Um, there's a lot of things that can happen with that and that gets to show that people are coming back with testimonies and people are enjoying your music. How do you draw your music? Do you have time that is separate? Do you hear it from the Word of God? Do you hear it as an audible voice? How do you hear your music? You know, a lot of, most of the times, I keep, first of all, I keep my ear to the street. I keep my ear to the church. So I keep my ear to what I think people in the world needs. But then I also keep my ear in the church to see what the church needs as well. Then I pray about it, and then I just keep listening and listening. And then I, I also listen to what other people are putting out. And, and just make sure, because if you, if you really keep your ear to the church, you'll know the need of the church. Mm -hmm. If you keep your ear to the world, you'll know the need of the world. And then what you do is you go back and you pray, you know, and then you kind of, you know, coast it like that. Um... I used to record like every other year. I, I stopped doing that now because I think in this world that we're living in now, it takes a it takes time to put music out. You know that's going to really penetrate the heart. You know, so you gotta you gotta take time. And a lot of times, people just kind of put songs out that just come to them in the shower or while they cook it. <laughs> that, but when you're dealing with a dying world, you have to take your time. It's almost like preaching. You know, you just can't just uh, write a sermon because you got to preach tomorrow. You have to know the need of your house, the need of the people that's going to be, you know, in your atmosphere. And and then you kind of create from that. And then there are times even as pastors and preachers and Bishop can attest to that. Sometimes you, 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 you mount the pulpit and you already have a sermon that you feel that God has called you to preach. But then the atmosphere is is calling for some, for another message mm -hmm. and in order for you to kind of write and create a message on spot you have to be in the face of the lord mm -hmm. that 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 calls kind of you know call for consecration dedication you got to be able to be in his face not just experience his hand but experience his face thank you Um, what would you say your favorite song is and why? Wow, I think I, you know, my favorite song from mine or favorite song from, 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 from yours? For me, um, right there's a few, but right now, I would have to say, if I if I had to pick three, I would have to say God favors me. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. um, it brought me through. I, I we we did that song at a very 
very strategic moment in my life. I was kind of shifting places and I was in a, I was in a, you know, sometimes you get into a, a, a place in life where you're just misunderstood mm -hmm. and you just kind of, you know, like, Lord, is this really where you need me to be or where you want me to be? And I, I kind of almost felt like throwing my hands up because I kind of felt like, you know, I've been doing it all this time and the people who I needed to stand with me didn't. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself standing alone. But um, I thought that was the worst time, but that was actually the best time yeah. because God had to let me know that, you know, you are my favorite, mm -hmm. you know, and I favor you and I'm going to, I'm going to doors that was closed. Don't try to fight for them to become open again mm -hmm. because I'm God enough to create new doors. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I would have to say that song. Um, I think the next song, which is, which is so surprising to, to, to a lot of my band members and even my choir members is Every Praise. Mm -hmm. Every Praise, um, when we first uh, did that song in rehearsal, nobody liked the song. <laughs> none of my musicians, uh, none of my choir members, they were sitting there kind of upset about it. I was like, uh, they called it an ABC song. <laughs> and what something inside of me was like this is the song and I fought with my musicians I fought with the choir and I said we are going to record this song but I need everybody to get into the right spirit you know <laughs> I needed the band to get into the right spirit so we prayed and prayed and so we went into the studio to do it um, I made some changes in the studio you know on the spot and the Lord told me the Lord said this is the song and um, when it when it came out you know, we, we tried to push other songs on the, on the project, but everybody gravitated, the world gravitated to every praise. And so I went back to the musician, <laughs> and I went back to the choir. And that's why it's so important that you always, even, although you have people, and if there's any ministers and music here, or if there's any, those of you that sing in groups, choirs, um, it's always important to Although you come with talent and you come with your gift, God always will set a minstrel in front of you, mm -hmm. a set minstrel in front of you, and and you must follow that 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 minstrel. I, I go around the world teaching uh, ministers of music how to collaborate with the pastor, and sometimes they don't really like what I have to say about that. Because although you are the minister of music, but the pastor is always the top minstrel. Mm -hmm. Because the pastor hears things, even if he can't play. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even if he can't sing. Like he knows how to bring that music into the worship that will lead it. And so that minister of music has to be in tune with that pastor, although he's a minstrel as well. But he's a minstrel under a minstrel. Mm -hmm. And so... When you follow the lead minstrel, like when you follow the lead pastor, when you follow your pastor, you cannot help but go up. And so I went back to them. I said, see, they just start laughing about it. But um, here it is, Song of the Decade. Um, we, 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 we are about to go double gold. We give, we, we actually, it went platinum. Wow. It went platinum. Wow. Yeah, just wow. just think it. God favored me is about to go platinum again. But we we um we 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 um every praise is platinum now, and so it's just it's just amazing. So I would have to say every praise. My last third the third song have to be with Bishop Clean Aside. <laughs> Clean Aside. Now that is a that's another song we did by accident. Uh, that song was really by accident. We 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 did that song live in um, Toronto, Canada. We was it was in dead in the men, middle of the winter, and we 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 got up there like two days late because we had two buses traveling from New York City to Toronto. The one bus broke down, so I had to pull a lot of choir members off that bus and put them on the on the other bus, and we were sitting three in the seat all the way, <laughs> and we was determined to get there. But we got there. Fred Hammond was producing it, and we was like, you know, and the crowd came back two days because we were two days late, but we got there. And then when we got in the middle of the concert, we had technical problems. So on our bus trips, 
you know, we would just kind of play around with different songs and we would do commercials and, you know, just kind of make, you know, make commercials on television and turn them into church songs. <laughs> so Clean Inside was one of us, a song that we just kind of created on a bus trip. Wow. And we would just kind of be on the bus talking about Clean Inside. Then clean inside, and it was just like that, and we would just just jump in and just you know just singing, and you know so it, we it, it goes like clean inside, clean inside, and it was wash me, fill me, cleanse me with your blood, won't you make you clean inside, then clean inside, so I can follow thee. That was a song, and we used to just play around with that. So when we get to the concert, they were saying that there were some major technical problems and every, the, the crowd was, you know, they was just hype and antsy. They was just getting, you know, because we were sitting there. They was, we was, they were sitting there for all this time. We were standing there trying to wait for the truck to get fixed. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, and I said, put it in A flat. And they put it in the air flat, and I just went, won't he make you? And the crowd wow. just jumped in, the choir jumped in. And we did that, and then about maybe five minutes after we did it, they said, okay, it's really ready to record. And then we just stopped it, and we finished with the recording. I get back to the hotel, listening to the soundtrack back, and the, one of the best songs were Clean Aside. That it was a feeling. <laughs> so I was nervous because, you know, it just... It just had two words <laughs> to the song. I didn't even do what I did in here. We just did clean inside. That's it. And um, I, w I went ahead and put it on the record. And every radio station mm -hmm. in the world just took it and started playing it. It was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> got to kid. And so it was so big. I never forget. It was it was um, it was up for a Grammy. And the Grammy committee decided that it couldn't be eligible for a Grammy because it only had two words. So it was like, all right. <laughs> but it's still one of my, mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs. It's, it, it, you know, it's not really considered a complete song because mm -hmm. a complete song is supposed to, supposed to be uh, a verse, a bridge, a, a, well, a, cor a verse, a chorus, and then a, a, a vamp. But it, it don't have all of that. So, But it's still one of my penetrating songs. I still love it. Last question for, from from me. Um, <coughs> so this week, so tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, what are you going to be doing? Some of the hits. What's on the selection? Because I'm really looking for. So many people have, <laughs> <laughs> so many people have emailed me from the UK for about a month, mm -hmm. asking me what are you going to sing. Some people even sent me songs that they want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so like Bishop said, I didn't. It really hit me after Bishop said it. It's like you, you have like <clears throat> maybe like two, three generations yeah, that will probably be here tomorrow. And I'm like, oh my god! Like it didn't dawn on me that it's been a long, that that much of a time, and all those records that I put out, even since the last time I did my live recording here, you know, in London at Wembley. So it's like. I'm gonna have to try to do as much as I can. I don't know how how much we could do you know, with the choir, but we we here, so we might as well do as much as we can. Maybe if I could just say, maybe my I'm a, I'm in a certain age, but I've spoke to about four or five people and just I hope he does old school hair. Yeah. Old school, old school. <laughs> everybody, 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 everybody telling me that. So I'm gonna have to go back and pull those songs. I got I, hopefully I can remember all of the old songs, but I think but I got it. I got it. Anybody else more questions? Go ahead. Uh, hi, my name is Charles. Uh, what tip can you give young upcoming artists who want to focus in gospel? Well, like I said earlier, stay close to your church, stay close to your pastor, keep your ear to the, what the church world needs, and and keep your ear to what the what the world needs as as well, because that's really so important. Um, the last project that we did called the song Better. That song came out. That song came to me because. You know, 
I, I just wanted to encourage people that although things were like it was, that especially with COVID, that it was going to get better, you know, but we just had to put our faith in God and we had to believe that God is in control of all of this, mm -hmm. you know. And so, again, I would, I, I would, the, the, your first calling, your first calling is your, your house of worship. You would be so surprised at the many artists that do not go to church, mm -hmm. that do not, that have not submitted to a local church and have not submitted to a pastor. And, but yet they have that gift and they have that talent and they want to break through. Um, if I can share this with you, this is not the season that God is just using people because you can do it. You, 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 you have to, you have to have a David's heart, a heart after God and to follow his instructions. And so I would say to you is that just make sure that you have that heart after God and that, that you want to put him first. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he said that seek his righteousness and his kingdom and everything else will be added to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm one of the ones who don't believe, I believe that you can, you can, you can reach a pinnacle. I believe that you can be blessed through gospel music. I believe that you can be successful. Anything that you want naturally, I believe that you can get it through gospel music. You don't have to play both sides of the fence. You don't have to leave gospel and go and do something else to become famous and become rich. I believe that you can stay on this side and do it, but you have to put God first. So I say put them first, and you can have anything that your heart desires. In, in England, um, the gospel industry as a genre itself is bigger than the entire UK music industry. So, uh, so a, a gospel artist mm -hmm. will outsell a, a pop style artist in, 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 the, in the UK completely. And so our industry, music, gospel music in the UK, is to the size where basically any success, so anybody who do gospel music has to be bivocational. And so being that you, you could not make a living in England just doing gospel music, and I'm sure those who do, do gospel music here can, can, can affirm that. And so it's a very, very different picture that we paint in England than you would do in America. How would you then, I took an appointment where you said, you know, stay fit, you don't need to cross over the fence. How do you then make a living for gospel artists who want to do gospel music, but it's not a paying type of industry that you can actually be in, but still be faithful to God, but once crossing over to, if, if need be, what is your income and what's your ministry? Can, can that by vocational kind of idea still exist? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think, um, I think, Every country is different, but I think if you keep your mindset on just your country, you you, you know you, you know how God is global, mm -hmm. and so you know the let's 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 talk about finance. You know fi uh, the financial piece of it. I didn't just make you know I just don't make finances or my my financial. Stability is not just based upon the U.S. You know, my fi my financial stability is based upon the global, the world. And I, I think if you limit yourself to your surroundings, then that's where that's where it's going to take you. Um, I live in Brooklyn, New York. Do I make money where I live? No, <laughs> if that's helping you a little bit, you see. So what I'm saying is, is that you know there. I I don't know if you can sustain yourself by just singing gospel music in New York City. So, but I do believe that if you if you dedicate yourself to to God, then God will begin to open up doors everywhere across the world, across the globe, that will sustain you, that will, that you will be able to live and live a comfortable life, that you won't have to do that. But it's, again, that takes 
a lot of faith, a lot of belief, a lot of dedication, and you have to, you know, learn the industry um, and go after it. Because now I do understand the difference between the UK and the United States when it comes down to gospel music. I get it. I totally understand that. But again, I don't think that no gospel artist or no musician that, that's from the UK should limit yourself to the UK. Because there's large sums of money in gospel music outside of the UK. When you can go get it, come back home. And still stay in Jesus. Because we can't. not a record company in England that would sign you right. uh, in, in gospel music in that sense so we have lots of talented musicians gifted musicians here but, uh, well let me say this mm. so let me show you let me tell you how God has moved with that mm. because in the United States mm. you know and most people don't know this when I was coming up in gospel music there was record labels everywhere mm. the record labels are very few in the states now I think we are and um, Anton, you can help me. I'm not sure, sure. But I think we're down to what four major. I think we're down to four in the entire United States of America. We get down to four major gospel labels, and one of them are, are kind of weak, you know. And the way I think that God has shifted it now is that you don't really need a label no more because of because of social media. You don't need that. The label has always been a middleman. Now, one thing that the labels have done in the United States, they make the artists famous, but they take the money. <laughs> really, uh, most of the gospel artists, most of the gospel artists in the United States have been struggling and struggling for years. <clears throat> but we just maintain ourselves because we're on the road and we travel and we global and we go places and we're able to do what we have to do. But it was the regulators who made most of the funds, who made most of the money back in the day. And I believe for gospel music, God has shifted it because of our hearts. And it's time for us now. So now we don't you don't need a label. You don't need a record label anymore. All you have to do, get on social media, know what you're doing and know how to do it and deal with those DSPs. If you can deal with the DSPs and, and do social media, you're good. And then all the money comes right in your pocket. that um, one gets someone because someone opened the door for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I believe that um, something could have similar happened in, in your life. Yes. And um, what is it that you are doing now or you are planning to do to open that door for the upcoming generation? Well, a few things I'm doing. Um I started my own record label called The Hess House Entertainment. Um, so I do have um, new artists that I have that's up under my label. It's For right now, it's a choir label. I love, anybody love choirs here? Yeah. I love choirs. <laughs> I love choirs. I just love choirs. And so we are, we are trying to sustain the choirs through that label. That's one um, that I'm doing. Um, I have a music school that I be uh, that I started in Virginia Union University mm -hmm. in Richmond, and so that's we are pushing for that to be the hub of gospel music in the states. 
at that particular school. So people are now coming to the school learning about gospel music. And then also doing stuff like this, like doing workshops and going out teaching and, and enlightening, enlightening people on how to become a part of the ministry, of the industry and ministry and stay in there and, and, and just how to, to work on your craft and to, and, to, and to be the next upcoming artist that's out there. And then to open the door, because again, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that I concur with you about someone have to open the door. And it takes relationships for that to happen. It takes relationship. A, a lot of people think that it's a lot of it is gifts and talent. Yes, but it's also a relationship. In other words, I'm just going to make it plain. You gotta be nice. <laughs> you you gotta be nice. You can't you can't be gifted and haughty. Mm. <laughs> you know you can't be. You know you can't be. You just you just can't you can't be gifted and you know <clears throat> you you want people to do things that is above their means to do. Um, without calling any names, you know, I, there's gospel artists back home that <laughs> read between the lines. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are gospel artists back home that will request for you to purchase them two first class tickets, but they don't use the other ticket. That is only because they don't like to sit by nobody on a plane. Mm. Wow. Mm. You see, stuff like that. Mm. You, you, you know, I can see if it's a first class ticket for your husband or for your wife or for your child or something. But when you say that I, you got to buy me a ticket and, and no one can sit in the seat because you don't like to sit by people, then you see... That see that's the kind of stuff that really shuts the door. And so when record companies hear stuff like that, they won't mess with you. If you're messy on social media, if you're always in something, you know, if you if you if if your if your pitches don't portray what you're saying on social media, record companies close the door and they go, no, they're bad for our company. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't say the right stuff. They don't wear the right things, they, they talk, they fight, nah. So it takes relationships. Sometimes you get in the door quicker if you're nice and if you're presentable and you know, you get into the door faster that way as opposed to, you know, being this on the mountain artist where people don't, they like your song, but they don't like your attitude. No. <laughs> no. You know, you understand what I'm saying? And, and they, they, they like your song, but they don't like your presentation. My bishop always taught us that people see you before they hear you. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to be careful. People see stuff and they go, they close their ears. And they miss something that God wanted you to say only because of what they saw. Mm -hmm. So I would say relationship is so important in the gospel industry. Just be nice and be loving. Be like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you, you ready to question that? My favorite Bible verse would probably have to be, I got a lot. Um, right now I would say John, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Can I ask a pastor question? Yes, sir. Um, one of the things that we're dealing with as a pastor, I pastored in the States for many years, but it's coming to England now. Mm -hmm is paying musicians at church. Mm -hmm. um, musicians are now demanding um, and basically um, giving their gift to the highest 
you know, um, it's it's a struggle. What what are your what are your thoughts? How would you advise a pastor when they they need the music, and and the organist is saying, Pastor, I'll play, but it's gonna it's gonna I need X amount, and the drummer needs this, and the bass player needs that. Mm -hmm. That's really a, a big struggle back home as well. <clears throat> um, I do believe that that the musician should, you know, receive some type of stipend. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that the musician should rape and rob the church. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the that the musician should understand, you know, the financial position that the church is in, mm -hmm. and if the church is able to to meet their financial obligations, mm -hmm. then I think that the church should do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there should be some mandate on the musician. Mm -hmm. I also believe that, now again, I'm cut from another puzzle. I don't allow musicians to play for our church unless they belong to our church. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is because Sometimes, if you allow a musician to come in that's not cut from the same fabric, they can bring another spirit in your church. And you don't want to, you don't, now, as much as the church need musicians, and music is a big part of our Amen. worship, mm -hmm. and you want to embrace that portion of text but then you don't want to violate the other text that talks about hirelings mm -hmm. so you don't want to hire an individual that will play and scatter the sheep mm -hmm. because musicians will rip your church apart mm -hmm. and 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 they will control the service they will even control you as the pastor. They will hold the church, and they hold the preacher, and they hold the music department, they hold the choir, they hold them hostage until they get what they need and what they want. You need a musician that has the pastoral heart, that has the heart of the minstrel, that a minstrel can sit under a minstrel and let that lead ministry lead the way. And I believe if you have the right pastor and the pastor know your heart, the pastor's going to make sure that you get what you desire and more. But, you know, it, it just takes, I think sometimes musicians just need clear understanding because most musicians love God. Most of them really want to be in church. Most of them want to stay in church. But they just need means to take care of themselves. Um, so I would say, yes, if the church is able to do it. Now, this is another hard saying. It's almost like the hard sayings of Paul. This is another hard saying. Is that, and if there's any, I see, you know, we might be on, on live, on social media. And I pray that no musician gets upset with me this, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm about to say. But y'all pray for me. You know I love you all. Um, I think some of these musicians need to get a job. <laughs> get a job. Well, what if the job is in church? Well, if if your job is in church and the church is not able to meet your financial needs, get a second job. I mean, I did it for years. I was in school. And, and I mean, I had records out in school. I, 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 my first two albums, I still was working. I was working at Merrill Lynch back in the States. Those of you that's online, that those of you from the States know what Merrill Lynch is. You know, I worked. I, I worked at the Department of Social Service, you know, until I was able to pull away from my job and let the ministry sustain me. But if the ministry can't sustain you, then you just have to do something. And then don't... You can't beat the church up because the church can't sustain you. This is a different time now. Mm -hmm. um, COVID has shifted everything about church. Mm -hmm. And find not just people, but money, mm -hmm. you know, and finances. And I think, 
But I think, Pastor Bishop, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it needs to be dialogue. Mm -hmm. It needs to be because I think for the most part, musicians have a misconception about the finances of church mm -hmm. and about the finances of pastors and of bishops. You know, um, I, I, I have to always kind of reassure people that's around me who have been a part of the ministry that, you know, I live off my music. I live off, you know, I live off my books. Mm -hmm. You know, I presently and haven't been, I'm not on salary at the church. Mm -hmm. And I'm not on salary at the church, not because the church can't, it's because I don't have to. Mm -hmm. you, you see that? Mm -hmm. But the membership don't know that. They're like, oh, no, Bishop Walker's is French, you know, <laughs> you know, the church is, you know, then, uh, then of course, a lot of that comes from the world, too. Mm -hmm. So the world says, oh, the church, the, ain't nobody rich but the pastor, the pastor taking all the people money. So that's in these musicians' minds, mm -hmm. and that's in their heads, you, you understand? And they don't think about lights, they don't think about electricity, they don't think about any of that, they don't think, they don't even think the church got bills, right. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. They don't, they, that's not what they, that, and then they compare themselves, and this is another reason why we struggle, because musicians, they compare themselves to secular musicians, to the money that's out there, you know, and then they come back and they beat the church up, but Yes, I do believe that if the church have it, then the church should should put the musicians on salary. The, 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 are, my, are my musicians on salary in my church? Yes, they are. They are on salary. All of my musicians in both of my locations. But they are members of the church, and they have to follow the rules like everyone else. They have to tithe. They have to come to prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. They have to they have the time. They have to come to prayer. They have to make funerals. They have to be in church. They have to make convocation. They have to do. They have to. They have to. They do convocation dues. All that. And this comes. This this this. It comes with it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I guess uh, again, like I said, Bishop, I think it it, it it's going to take sit down con right. conversations to have and just kind of make it plain. And then bring someone in that's where they're trying to go sure. to kind of help them get to that. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, everybody. Look at somebody beside you and tell them, I need you. I need you. You need me. You need me. You're all apart. relationships, social media. Um, I work with some of the gospel artists here in the UK and I think one of the most um, sort of things that I've seen that they struggle with is we're talking about branding, um, teamwork, there's no unity yeah. um, and also um, as you say the relationships and also have a team to work with. Yes. Sometimes they want to work as lone workers rather than as together so how do you deal with that? You gotta always go back to the Bible. I think that's what's wrong with the kingdom. What's wrong with the kingdom, and it's not just here in the UK, but but all over the world. Um, we don't understand that the key to any success scripturally is unity and being a unified body. That text that says where there's two or three, that's not just any of being there. That was to let you know that God never expected for his kingdom to be individualized. He expected for us to do it together. And that's how we are blessed. And from the beginning of time, the enemy has always fought against unity. Not just in the church, but even in your natural life. That's why he, he comes to break up marriages, friendships, relationships, because he doesn't like for anybody to be unified or to be together as one because when we come together as one we are a powerful group of, a powerful group even as you know ethnic people if we come together we can do some mighty things 
but we 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 tend to have an engine um we tend to have an in, uh, individualized mind and God never intended for us to do it by ourselves. One can chase a thousand, but what? Two what? Can put 10,000 to fight. You see that? And if we can just get that, if we can just teach that and get it, but I think egos get in the way, pride get in the way, this is mine, and I don't want, you know, I, I just want everybody to know that this is my idea and I did it, but you need a team. And you need a team that because when one walk in the door, everybody should walk in the door. You know, I you know I've learned this since I was a child. When your pastor is blessed, you should be blessed. Mm-hmm. And that's how it is. It's like you 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 you, you know, um, we call it secondary leaders or ancillary leaders, leaders who push the one up in the front. Because God got to use somebody. Mm-hmm. But 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 when he's using Bishop and I'm connected to Bishop, he's also using me. So I think if we can just get that concept in music and get that concept concept in church, I think we'll be a much better representation for the kingdom of God here on earth. Lisa, great. Thank you. Now, Bishop, who inspired you and who's your favorite artist? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who inspired me? Um, I, I would have to, naturally, I would just have to say my mom. Mm-hmm. She was my greatest inspiration. Um, made me fall in love with gospel music, mm-hmm. which <laughs> I I don't want to say despised, but my mom played gospel music so much in that house, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> after school, I'm coming home from school and I'm hearing it. I'm in my sleep hearing it. And I didn't know what she was strategically doing. She was playing so much until it was getting in my spirit. It was getting in me. And then I, I, I remember I was I was on my way home from school one day and I caught myself singing one of them songs. I was like, what am I singing? You know, <laughs> not knowing that it was in me to, to, to really do so. Here I am, the thing that I bucked up against, the thing that I didn't like, I'm now doing. You see, so um, I would have to say, say my mom. Now, when it comes down to artists, um, one of the reasons why I recorded in the UK is because of Andre Crouch. Wow. Um, when I was a young boy, Andre Crouch <clears throat> recorded live in London. And I used to sit and look at, they don't make the album covers anymore, but I would sit and look at that album cover, just look at it and look at it. And I would say to myself, one day I'm going to record in London. And I, and I did. Mm-hmm. So to answer your question, I would have to say Andre Couch. He's dead and gone now, you know, but um, he's still a favorite of mine and um, still gives me a lot of inspiration. Now, I do have some new artists that's up and that's not up and coming, but that's here on the scene that I really do love right now. But if I would have, like who? Um, Todd Delaney. Mm -hmm. Todd Delaney is like one of my favorite guys now. Uh, Let me see. William McDowell is one of my favorite. Um, I gotta say, of course, Fred Hammond. Fred Hammond. um, um, you <laughs> I know everybody's waiting for me to say Kirk Franklin, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, the reason, no, Kirk Franklin, what I think would be my all time favorite, and I think he would be everybody's all time favorite. But Kirk Franklin and I basically kind of came up in the music together. So it's like, like he's my he's my buddy. But um, I think he's everybody's icon. So. <laughs> Questions? 
if I can be really quick, what would you want your legacy to be? I would want my legacy to be that I have helped somebody as I pass through. Seriously, I you know, if I can't help you, I'm certainly not gonna hurt you. So I'll just bow out. And I want people to say that these songs have truly helped me. I was blessed before I came here, maybe about seven or eight years ago, I came out of my house and there was a note on my car. And I'm, I'm kind of used to it because I decided, you know, when the Lord blessed me, I was trying to figure out should I stay, live in the same neighborhood that I basically pastored in and I grew up in. I, I had the opportunity to move out of the neighborhood. And I was struggling because, you know, I love the neighborhood. But it was getting really bad, full of crime and stuff. But I just wanted to stay because my mindset was to stay in the neighborhood to show people that you can make it. And so, you know, everyone knows where I live, basically. So every other day I would come outside and there would be a note on my car. And I would just like, it, it, some, some, some of the notes were bad notes, but most of the notes were good notes. Mm -hmm. And so I come outside this day, take the note off the car, I'm looking at it, and I was getting ready to ball the note up, you know, because I, I just didn't kind of feel like no notes in my car. So I said that I decided to read it, and it was a no, no name on it, but it was talking about the song Every Praise. And it was saying how, you know, he, the person was saying, I don't go to church. Um, I heard the song as I was working out in, in one of the gyms in New York, and I just put, I Google every praise, your name came up, song came up, and I put the song in my phone. So he said every day he would play the song Every Praise at the gym. And he be, and he became like a fan of the song. He said one day, in the letter, he said one day there was another guy that was working beside him and said to him, you like that song? And the guy, he said, yeah, I love the song. He said, well, you need to come to my church because we sing it every Sunday. Not my church, but we sing it every Sunday. He said, so he said, well, what's the church? The church is the Brooklyn Tabernacle. I don't know if you ever heard of the Brooklyn oh. Tabernacle. So he said he goes to the Brooklyn Tabernacle, and that Sunday that he went, the choir sung every praise. And he said he started crying, he fell to his knees, and got saved that day. And he said that um, that song was like his life. Every time he thinks about his salvation, he thinks about the song every praise. One day he's driving past my house, and he sees our church van in the driveway. And my church van was posted with the Every Praise logo and my name on the church van. And he was like, oh my God, Hezekiah Walker lives here. And so he thought to himself, write a letter. He didn't want to ring my belly say. He thought to himself, write a letter and let me know that the Lord changed his life from the song. That was like seven years ago. About two weeks ago, and he never put his name on. I didn't know who he was. About two weeks ago, I had to go sing in Times Square. I get to Times Square and I see this Caucasian man looking at me. And so my first mind, I'm in the middle of Times Square and this guy keeps staring at me. I'm like, I hope this man is not a terrorist or something. And <laughs> I hope he's not, you know, gonna shoot me or something like that. So I'm standing there and he keeps looking at me and looking at me and I, I, I did everything to distract him. I, I went, uh, you know, somewhere else. I stood somewhere else and wherever I went, he was like this. And I kept saying to myself, I don't know if I should call somebody or tell somebody. But anyway, I began, they called me to sing. So I was singing and I saw him whispering to the cameraman. And I was like, okay, well, maybe he works with the video or whatever like that. And then I saw him whispering to someone else. And then I saw him whispering to someone else. And then after it was over, they was talking about the sponsors. And he actually sponsored the entire Times Square event. The entire sponsor. I mean, the, the entire event. He was the sponsor of it. And it takes a lot of power and a lot of money to shut Times Square down. Whoa. And so after it was over, he came, he said, I know you saw me looking at you. And I said, yes. I said, I'm going to be honest with you. you. You scared me. He said, the reason why. And then as he was talking, his eyes started watering. He said, the reason why I was looking at you because I'm so grateful to God for you. 
And he said, the song Every Praise. And so I get that testimony all the time. So I'm not, I'm not going, okay, yeah. He said, the song Every Praise, bless my heart. I got saved off that song. And I promised God that if I was to ever meet you, that I was going to do something. I needed to do something for you. He said, I don't know if you, you got a letter, but I put this letter on your car about seven wow. years ago. And I was like, you was the one that left the letter? He said, yeah. I said, why didn't you leave your name? He said, because God told me, leave the letter. And in his timing, we would meet. Wow. Seven years later, I get this story. And wow. when I get home, he, you know, I told him I was coming to the UK. And so he said, well, when you get back, he gave me his numbers. He wants to talk with me. He, he owns this film company. And he owns all this other stuff. And I'm looking at this man like, wow. So I don't know what's going to happen when I get back. <laughs> but I'm going to meet with him. But see, that's the, that's the, that's the kind of that's the kind of things that happens that I want people to remember that, you know, mm -hmm. that I heard this song. It changed my destiny. It changed my life. I heard he put this out there, and I'm still listening to it now. So, yeah. Yes, it's me, it's your boy David um, Really hope you like the content of the video um, Be sure to make sure you like, subscribe, stay tuned Go to affinityextra.com Check out the website, download the app Go on Instagram, make sure you follow Make sure you stay in tune to everything that's happening